what? Those videos bother me. Of course I love gorgeous houses as much as everybody, but those videos never get behind the scenes. We have no idea if the houses in those videos are well built. What's the mechanical systems? How are they heating their water? What's the insulation like? Oh, they drive me crazy. The build show today, we're gonna go behind the scenes on one of those crazy houses. Let's get going. The Build Show is on the road. We are in LA and I am here with the famous YouTuber Ennis. How's it going, Matt? So good to meet you, my friend. Good to see you here. And How's it going, Matt? Michael. Michael is the you. builder developer on this incredible Bel Air house. Guys, you got to tell me about this. What are we seeing here? I'll let him speak. It's it's one of the best ones in Bel Air right so now. So we're built, we, we're standing on a, a pad that's about 1.2 acres. Okay. The lot is about two acres. Uh, we're in a house that's actually 20,000 square feet, seven bedrooms and 11 bathrooms. Wow. Yeah. Overlooking Over downtown, downtown LA. We, we overlooks the uh, golf course and you can see from downtown LA all the way down to Newport Beach. And Michael, you're the developer. So you're the guy who had the full vision here. Sure. You hired the full team from the architect to the general contractor. You acquired the land. Mm -hmm. A project like this, this isn't a one year project, is no. it? It should have been about four, but it took us six. Yeah, COVID. Uh, COVID, it kind of put us behind. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Everyone's in that same boat. Yeah, but these kind of houses, it's not like you're just building a house. You're building like a miniature hotel. Yeah. Per se. Yeah, that's right. Or so a resort, really. Resort, yeah, everything's custom. So everything, you got to be so meticulous about every transition that you, you know, you work on the project. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you build a hilltop house in LA, yeah. I'm assuming this isn't a one month foundation job where you <laughs> no, come the, in and start pouring some uh, footers and get going. Yeah, the foundation took us two years. Okay. Um, and because we actually had a little bit of a landslide on the side of the, their lot. Yep. So they have to remediate that shade down a lot of uh, the, the loose mud and then remediate the whole site. Wow. And then to build the site on top of this, we have 60 caissons. caissons yeah. Wow. So, like so you've got stabilized. 60 of those what it looked like downtown Down commercial yeah. building. Yeah. 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 Uh, and concrete tubes down into the bedrock. Exactly. Right. Literally locking this site to the bedrock that's below us. Wow. Yeah. And then from there, you build a concrete pad on top, yep. locking all those caissons together, yeah. and then you build up. That's when you can actually start building up because if you look around, all the pools, decks, everything mm. is floating. Yeah, everything's yeah. on top of that. Yeah. It's as, as, as if the house was on stilts, right? And we're, at, we're on the coast and you've got sand, which is not that stable. Exactly. And so those piles need to go on the coast all the way down to the rocks right. in here. That's exactly. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, the one thing you've got going here, though, that a lot of builders like me don't have to deal with is earthquakes yes. and yeah. fire, too, yeah. right? Earthquake Maybe and not fire, fire in this a, neighborhood. Uh, they could be, but it's not effective. No. But I can imagine there's a lot of structural steel in this place, yes, too, right? there is. And we can see a little bit of it right there. Check out that floating cantilever. What are we looking at up so there? The floating cantilever is that structural tube. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. yep. Yeah. So on top of the, the structural tube is our um, rooftop deck. Wow. And then this is how this is the you, you'll have the um, louvers mm -hmm. that kind of like emulate a little bit that piano key. Oh, I love it. And then it has uh, three different colors that are similar to is each that other. right yeah i love it and what is that material that looks like maybe anodized, anodized aluminum? aluminum yes all right i That's guess correct. right yeah Beautiful. it's the only way it's incredible yeah. and the super thin lines on your doors what is that a is that an italian door system so what are this we looking is at? A, a style line system it's uh, mimicking a little bit of batroxa like a oh, yeah. swiss company sure and so the mullions which is kind of like that thin, it's about an inch thin Super so thin. Super thin. And, but you do need structural glass to have this kind of system. Yeah. Yeah. The glass panels are absolutely giant. I suspect that's from Europe. Yes. yes. The glass panels, even though the frames might be made in the US. Yes. But it allows you to maximize the views. I mean, that, that seam is hardly anything, which yeah. is fantastic. And the thresholds are non existent. They're, they're sunken down in, so you've got zero change from the inside to the outside. Yeah. Exactly. And having these aggressive cantilevers, not only it brings shade, it frames the view and also it protects all the sliding glass doors. That's so you don't have to worry about water. Yeah. You can just open them up. You don't even need to have slopes. And if you walk around, a lot of the decks are all floated. 
You have drains all underneath, yeah, so you yeah. get the seamless look. You don't have to slope anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, right. yeah. so there's no grout here. Yeah, the so water it's, actually it's, floats it's, uh, down. Yeah. Bice, it's called bison floating system. Sure, yeah. We use it all the so time in Texas. Technically, it's on a certain type of steel. To, it has a mesh uh -huh. that's right on the bottom, and then you can adjust how tall and low you have the you suspensions. Want. Yeah. If you wanted to take one of these out later, some suction cups and some and strong up, guys, you could right. actually yeah. pop that up. Exactly. Yeah. What an interesting uh, match, too, because if you think about this, I'm assuming this is granite, probably? This is Sardo. Okay. So. It's a, it's a type of granite. Yes. It's a type of granite. And then you look at your smooth stucco on the soffit. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it's an interesting uh, sandwich. I really yeah. like it. It's beautiful. How about we go uh, check out the kitchen? Okay, let's go. We'll meet you over there. Oh my gosh. Michael, this what is incredible. Think? Wow, so great to meet you, man. Incredible, look at this place. 24 foot ceilings, stone walls, stone marble walls, floors, and staggers are those. And the glass feels incredible. I mean, there's just tiny little strips of support in between those huge panes. Those seams are some of the smallest I think I've ever seen. It's like basically single pane at this point. Wow, this yeah. is an incredible entryway i mean this is definitely the great room entry feeling right here so matt Beautiful. just to give you a little context homes at this scale and price point it's beyond just accomplishing your great living room mm -hmm. kitchen area you almost need that wow effect yep. and an entry that truly truly sets the tone yeah. and this is what this space is i know it's configured in a more interesting way and yeah. uh michael can dive in here a little bit more but it's setting the mood this is the first space you walk yeah. into. When you're thinking about how to wall people, you gotta have come up with three walls. The first wall is the curvature. Yep. You come in, you have the long driveway, mm -hmm. big up, so it makes it look like you're going through like, you know, like a, a, a mansion. Yes. And then when you arrival is the second experience. When you open the door, you see the house, that's the second wall. The third wall is when you walk outside the house, the back yard, that's the third wall. And we're trying to accomplish this three walls for the, for the, People. I'll vouch for him. I think he did. I think he, he did accomplish it. And uh, this how, is the entry. How do you get into that mindset of that person who's going to purchase a house in this price point? I mean, this is not a person who's going, does this have enough bedrooms for my yeah. kids? Does this have these five things to check off sure. my box, right? Yeah. So uh, to start, we actually have to kind of understand the lifestyle of these kind of clientele. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you obviously need to have friends or you have some sort of network with these people. But what's the most important thing is that you got to understand the mindset of their taste mm -hmm. and also um, the, 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 the kind of what do they see that's, that's valued. Right, right. Sometimes you build, and, you know, like a, let's just say you, you put like a $10,000 sculpture there, nobody mm -hmm. cares. Right. But if you put a Ferris wheel garage, you know, oh, I can, I can park <laughs> six of my Ferraris in there. Yeah, with the Schweiss door, I noticed. And the Schweiss door. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty incredible. It is. And it's all about being able to create something unique, put your own creative touch to it, but at the same time, understand who the clientele is and what the vision calls for yeah. and be able to accommodate that. You know, we talked off camera, but it's a very difficult gamble mm -hmm. to project all these qualities. Sure. And you need to find someone like Michael who is willing to take and lead the entire process mm -hmm getting the information both from architects, car, uh, contractors, and then you have investors and being able to balance all this yeah. information and input that comes into the center and he leads the pack and brings the product yeah. to a finish. It's incredible. And it's you're in these houses that are in this incredible range all the time. You know, this is this house is north of 50 million, maybe just slightly south of 100. Yes. There's not many of those under construction yeah. in the whole world on an annual basis. What, how, do, how do developers like Michael uh, have that total picture in mind? You know, is that, did that come from partially the architect? Did that come from uh, investors? Where does, where does that come from? I'm curious from your perspective. Um, so people like Michael obviously are generally the people that sees these properties, understand mm -hmm. the mechanics of how these homes are put together. And it's, it's a unique take of a home build because conventional home is a couple thousand square feet. When you want to tackle a project like this, it's beyond just understanding how to build a home. It's a, it's a sculpture, it's an art piece, it's a creative expression. Right. So 
a lot of these individuals who are willing to tackle this challenge are generally really experienced in these kind of homes. Yep. Second, they see that it's, a, it's putting a big puzzle together. And that's where really their value comes from. It's understanding that, okay, this architect is really good. He may have these challenges, but I think I can get him to work on this project. Okay, this contract is fantastic. He may have a shortfall here that I can kind of fulfill with my other contracts. Okay, this investor is great. He wants to be involved in a big project, but at the same time, he doesn't want to deal with the hassle. And you being the nucleus right in the center, you start seeing the vision. And that's generally what it takes to go pitch these ideas anyways. I mean, can you imagine I walk to you and be like, Hey, I want to build an $80 million home. You'd be like, you're crazy. So you need that convincing effect and Michael's experience and know-how and because he's seen all these homes, that's where that knowledge comes from. One other thing is you have to listen. You have to really, you know, do your research and listen to opinions. Totally. And another thing that I noticed is that sometimes you have to follow your instinct and just be fearless and, and take that step. Yeah. Well, you have on this one, that's for sure, Michael. Incredible. How about we go over and see the kitchen, shall we? Sure, let's go. Wow. Matt, we'll get your first reaction. <laughs> How, what do you think of the island? <laughs> this is unbelievable. Look at this island. Not just the waterfall edge, mm -hmm. but a multi-compound chamfer, I guess, would chamfered, be the right yeah. term, right? Because we've got a chamfered edge here that comes into another chamfered edge. How with a reveal here. How in the world here. did the stone cutter do that? Yeah, with the reveal for lighting. Yeah. And you've got metal in there. You've got this incredible, uh, is that rose gold? Is that yeah. what I'm seeing? Rose gold. Rose gold. Marcolina. So we actually designed all our own islands in this house. So this was actually designed after a uh, specific look that has a chamfer. Uh -huh. um, the details of these chamfer, you see how thin these are? Super thin. To design this thickness so thin, you need reinforcement mm -hmm. rebars in the back. Is that right? Before okay. You, before you actually slapping your slaps. So they've cut it, then they probably use some type of router to make a groove, That's drop right. rebar into the sure. epoxy yep. to reinforce it, and then they epoxy this two together. Yeah, and yeah. then they sand the corner so that this is completely smooth. Bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just a little bit of a radius so you don't cut your hand yeah. on there. So this is another example of what you know the concept of design follows function. The function for this, you can actually have the stool chair and you can use it as the... As a I'm, I'm sure you dealt with this. Like, you'll have the bar stools, but you'll hit the cabinetry. Yeah. You've got to <laughs> recess in the cabinetry <laughs> bag. Exactly. And look how this vein, it looks like you actually and carved this out of one there, rock. Yeah. That's incredible. I, I mean, it. the Beautiful. the craftsmanship on stone and what you can do with it if you pay attention and you're willing to put the resources in, yeah. stone can take a totally different shape. And that's something that I've... I've learned a lot in LA, like book mash the right way, or mm -hmm. if you spend the time and if you layer the slabs right, you can create beautiful imagery and yeah. design. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing that's really different about this house too, that I think uh, as, as a builder is difficult to work with is all the glass. Because yes. not only do you have incredible glass of views, but you have so much internal glass. Mm -hmm. Did these actually come from Arclinia? Yeah, these are the product from Arclinia. Wow. Is this reflective oh. antique? Uh, bronze glass. And look, it lights up when and you open the cabinet too. <laughs> when you open it. Very beautiful. Wow. And you have these um, cooling ledges that comes out. Mm. Gorgeous. And don't forget the reveals as well. They're the also reveal. rose gold. Rose gold reveal. So tight. Super tasteful. All Italian, I'm assuming, right? All Italian. Italian. From Italy? Everything in this house is imported from Italy. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Absolutely beautiful. And then Mila we appliances. Um, yep. The Miele uh, appliances. Chef's house. kitchen and behind. Chef's kitchen. And is this a door I'm seeing yeah, here that's too? a door. You've got a pocket door right in yes. here. So we, we like to keep the chef's kitchen open for during the times of service. Look at this. But a lot of times when you have big staff cooking <laughs> in the back, you want to conceal it. Wow, and that's yeah. glass and on the door too, isn't it? I was going to say, does it have the track where you can like kind of lightly slam it and it sucks yeah, it in? Yeah, it does. It, it does. If, um, Ooh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're like, wait, 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 wait. when that it's adjusted, nice. you can slam these doors, yeah. and right at the last second, they kind of slow down. Soft closes yeah. in. Wow, incredible. And again, from the kitchen, incredible downtown views. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. We got to check out the master bedroom a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and I got to say, the millwork uh, from this Ramadicio? Ramadicio. Ramadicio. Incredible. incredible. Just the details were. Super. Fun I mean, how how nice was that door hardware? 
handle. Just the handle. So their hardware are really good. And they're, the thing is, at this level, every material has to match a certain quality. Yes. And when you build at this price point, you start running out of vendors because it's such high precision and quality yeah. and craftsmanship that you need to provide. And Remedisi is the one brand that can deliver on that, uh, deliver on that message on many aspects, cabinetry, doors, pretty much anything they do is quality. And are, are there installers flying over? Or do you uh, have we local have local folks? installers. Okay. But they're trained from Italy. Okay, so they've been so, over yeah, to they've get been the Italian Italy. training. Correct. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They have to know how to puzzle everything together. So how they do the cabinetry is a lot of times they design it. They will actually put it together there first. Yep. And then they, re, uh, they, they, they disassemble it, give you like a map for you to come and put it back. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. You know, one thing that, uh, that I've always been amazed with is every time I've been to LA, it seems like I've had a perfect day when it comes to weather. Mm -hmm. And Ennis, I know you actually spent a couple of years in Texas, yeah. my, uh, my state. Yeah. How would you compare Texas weather to LA weather? I mean, Texas has way harsher weather, whether it comes to rain, uh, weather conditions, moisture, and the way you build there is totally different, obviously. I was talking to Matt. If you have a pinhole on your siding, it will literally flood your home in like a month after a couple of rain, <laughs> it was rainy of days. That building it needs to be perfect. Well, like the waterproofing is so important. Versus in California, you can have a roof with a leak, and it can leak for years. And if you have good ventilation, your house will be fine. You won't even have mold. Yeah. As crazy as that sounds. So, yeah. obviously, weather dictates how people build here. Yeah. And because it doesn't rain that much, and because weather is so dry and just easy to work with. Yeah. Pretty much every house you go has sliding glass doors. You open mm -hmm. up as much as possible. In fact, you saw the floor transitions. I mean, yes. we don't even have thresholds. Yeah. Just walk straight to the outside. Incredible. And when you live here, when you embrace this weather, you'll understand why people yeah. build like this and it makes sense. I mean, inside or outside, there are days, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Temperature is exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. That's how comfortable you feel in your home, own home. So to me, LA is all about maximizing the outdoors and bringing it yeah. into your home. And Texas is more about creating a space that's comforting, yeah. that can seal you off from the weather conditions mm -hmm. when it gets harsh. It's yeah. funny, you know, my friends who build in Boston, who build in the Northeast, in Minnesota, they're really building against their ridiculously harsh winters. Right? Yes. They have yeah. to have massive insulation. Sure. And in Texas, we really build against our super harsh summers. It's 105 at home right now. Whereas in LA, I get the sense that, you know, it's around five degrees of your set point on your thermostat. Yes. A good portion of the year, which means you can slide open giant doors a lot of the time mm -hmm. and not even think twice about it because the temperature is so mild. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Exactly. And that's the draw to Los Angeles. I mean, it's the weather. Yeah, yeah. the weather. Pretty yeah. incredible. So that's why they have a Title 24. They yes. want to protect everybody from building the whole house with glass. Right. Yeah, right. makes sense. That makes sense. And I mean, you saw the sliding glass doors here. They're all concealed. Yep. Just open up any corner you can think of, pretty much opens up to the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we walked uh, a minute ago down through a hallway, which was kind of a your version of a mechanical closet. It's a mechanical hallway. Mechanical hallway <laughs> with hidden doors <laughs> and beautiful hinges. And I noticed all Daikin VRF equipment, which is some of the world's most equipment. Uh, OG most efficient yeah. uh, multi-split from Germany. That's a really, really high-end brand of HVAC equipment. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you have any other mechanical spaces that allow me to kind of see behind the scenes. That uh, we have the condensers and some of the stuff that's actually at the side of the house. Awesome. How about we finish the video there? over there? Yeah. That sounds good. We'll Go meet ahead. you over there. Let's do it. Hey guys, check this out. The master bedroom still has some millwork happening, and. It's absolutely fabulous. So we talked about this earlier. This is Remdesio millwork. This is kind of the master study uh, office space. And think about this desk here where you've got your owners looking over the skyline. I mean, that view is unbelievable out here. Hopefully you can see it. You've got a lot of contrast on video, but we've got the downtown skyline of LA right here. Outdoor owner's porch with a walkway up to an upstairs deck that just has an incredible view. But what I wanted to point out is this millwork system is really interesting. Uh, here's the uh, brand name right here, Rim, Rimadicio. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that Italian name right. This panel system that goes on, you'll see in a second, goes up in stages with some panels that have access to them 
on the inside. So this has got a uh, transformer in here, some kind of switch and an outlet. And the panels here are fixed, but some of the panels are removable like this one. So I'm assuming you gotta get a suction cup to pop this panel off, but it looks to be like it's just magneted on there. And then check it out, they've got LEDs on the bottom and LEDs on the top. So as you walk down here, this panel system just pops in. You've got one door here, which is gonna let you in the back way to the master closet. We'll check that out in a second. But I love the access panel idea. And I also really like how it's set off the top and bottom, which means that it doesn't need to be scribed into those areas. Master bath will go there in a second. But check it out, he's working on the, the panels right now. So you can see these panels uh, are, I don't know, three feet or so by whatever the ceiling height is, 10 foot. They're set off the ceiling and the floor by a couple of inches. And then there's just a clip system that he's screwing into this plywood backer. And then these inset panels just kind of magnet their way in. This looks really cool. Way to go. I love it. They're able to run low volt wires back behind here because this is all easy to get through. There's some high volt going through. I'm assuming there's probably some outlets behind the bed. Pretty neat system. And to see the leather and the fluted uh, walnut panels that are going in here just adds a really pretty contrast. While we're at it, you got to check out this master bath. Look at this. This is incredible, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. I've never seen this detail before. Here's something that's new to me. Look at the pull on the cabinets. The pull on the cabinet, actually come around here so you can see this. Here's the countertop and you can see the pull on the cabinet actually interlocks or, or goes on top of the cabinetry. Isn't that pretty? And then there's a reeded or fluted, and I'm not sure what that's called, design there. And that drawer just opens up. And before we get back to uh, Michael and Ennis, check out this master closet. I can only imagine what this costs. <laughs> this is incredible, isn't it? Looks like they're nearly complete over here, but all glass doors, backlit, all the, uh, you know, think about an owner's watch collection or jewelry or whatever, and these glass tops, walnut floors. I mean, this is unbelievable. Such a cool design, heck of a master closet. I mean, this, to me, this feels like an $80 million house, doesn't it? Seeing a closet like this, I don't know how many square feet this is. This is probably uh, 400 square feet, maybe a master closet, all walnut and glass. Incredible. Let's go find those guys again. got an outdoor mechanical space. This is not something we do in Texas. No, I know, and this is what I was gonna tell you. Because weather is so great here, and as long as you have a covered space, you can just have most of your mechanical equipment. It's good for it because it gets ventilation. If yeah. you have any leaks or issues, you're not messing up the house. At the same time, it makes it really easy to access to maintain. And this is a hot day for LA, and it's what, 82 out? Yes, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, perfect. it's perfect weather. It's. Honestly, it's hard for you to wrap your head around how good the weather is in yes. California. And that's why people enjoy these kind of homes. It's 105 back home, back home in Texas. And it is, I'm thoroughly comfortable with long sleeves and jeans on here oh, in yeah, LA. We're, we're easy. In the middle of August. And like uh, Michael can mention, a lot of times when you do the site work for these kind of homes, obviously we have a massive case on, one of many. Okay, so this is the full size case on that we're seeing here. And you right. had and how many of these? And we have 60 of these piles that goes down 30 foot to hit the bedrock, and this is for stabilization for the earthquake. Wow. Yeah. It basically locks, it locks the home the to bedrock. the mountain. Yeah. Which is insane. But also it gives you great it gives you an opportunity to have really aggressive open spaces like this. Yeah. I mean we're Amazing. far yeah. behind the house. Look yeah. how great this space is. Yeah, none of this noise is gonna none of this is gonna be seen. Yeah, this exactly. is really smart. It's out of the way. So one thing I want to mention, most developers they don't really design the house with the enough mechanical space. Oh, amen, so when for sure. Towards the end, then they're gonna have to sacrifice a square footage right. just to put the mechanical. So it's very important to evaluate your mechanical space. And the fact that this is outdoors means it's easily serviceable. You don't have to exactly. have a service guy tromping through your 100%. master bedroom right. to get to, uh, yeah. to something. Yeah. 
Uh, plus, like I said earlier, the temperature just doesn't get that hot or cold here, yeah. right? Yeah. What's, what's, the, the, what's the coldest it gets in the winter? Or what's an average winter day around here? 40, 50 mm. maybe? Yeah, sometimes they'll snow. Every few years. It's just once. At night, it can get cold. At night, it can get cold a little bit during winter. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, it's just like weather is always great. And like a lot of times, you can get away with not even running your AC. With yeah. those sliding glass doors, yeah. you pop a couple, of, uh, pop, couple yeah. of them open. Just the ventilation you get along. Yeah. Wow. Plenty good. That's Sometimes wild. in the winter, we can wear shorts. That's how great the yeah. weather is. That's wild. Yeah. Michael, is. I can't thank you enough for giving us an You're incredible welcome, tour. I appreciate you. Guys, coming. go follow Michael on Instagram. This house will be eventually uh, totally done, totally staged and furnished. Uh, so if you have any friends that are in the $100 million range for <laughs> buying a house, yeah. you can contact Michael. Contact me. We'll give you a little bit of broker's fee and then, uh, yeah, we'll give you, and a discount too. Incredible. Yeah. And Ennis, <laughs> so cool to finally meet you, man. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you so much for coming. I'm glad like you got a chance to see California, true modern home that uh, Michael built here. And uh, thank you for coming. For sure. And you know, it's fitting that we wrap up in the mechanical room because you know my audience loves the nerdy mechanicals. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that we got to see this last, icing on the cake for me. Awesome. awesome. Thank you guys for joining. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Dennis, incredible to meet you, man. I really appreciate Likewise. it. Likewise. You know, your channel has seen incredible success in only a couple of years. Thank you. You got you to gotta tell me a little bit more about how you got into this. What, what made you decide to start making these incredible videos? So it's a great question. Uh, I used to live in Texas. Uh -huh. When I was 21, I bought a house and it was a remodeled home that wasn't complete. Okay. And I got a chance to finish it and I fell in love with the craft. Oh. And you were in uh, Corpus Christi, Corpus Texas. Christi that's Corpus right. Corpus Christi, Texas. Because you were a professional windsurfer for Correct. a while, right? I was a professional windsurfer for 12 years and I used to live in Corpus Christi because it's one of the windiest cities <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, I really enjoyed finishing the home that I bought. And I was like, as soon as I'm done with windsurfing, this is my next career path. So at the age of 27-ish, I started flipping and remodeling homes. Yep. That's when I ran across your channel and I learned so much That's from you crazy. in regards to building well, waterproofing. I mean, you name it, you, you cover such variety of nice, topics. Man. And um, that really showed me that it's beyond just building a home. You can build something that lasts forever, has yep. meaning to it. That's and right. it really made me appreciate the craft and appreciate the people that are behind these homes mm -hmm. actually building them. So when I moved to LA, which was about give or take four years ago, and I became an agent here, what I realized, and a lot of people told me, and as you're really knowledgeable when it comes to homes, yeah. and people were bringing me their inspection reports, they were bringing me to homes, how much do you think it would cost to remodel and do this? <laughs> and I kind of realized, okay, there are these beautiful homes, but not many people know how to talk about them from yeah. a building standpoint right. or appreciation standpoint. Yeah. It's not even to say people were doing a bad job. I just felt stoked like you were today seeing these homes at these scales. I was like, I'm going to start talking about these construction details and it may come across a little bit nerdy, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, I think that's what drew me to your videos because you're not just the typical real estate uh, video, right? guy. Like, like I kind of said at the beginning that, that I hate real estate videos, <laughs> Yeah. but, but that's so fascinating that you have a builder background that you were remodeling for several years, uh, because I think that really comes out in your videos, even though Thank your you. intended audience like mine is not builders, yeah. uh, you know, you have all ages and all genders and everything that you're appealing to. That's somebody's Ferrari in the background, that by is. the way. <laughs> but, uh, I think that's so fascinating that you really understand the craftsmanship. And I think it's, I think you get excited about some of the details because you know what it takes to accomplish them. Whereas a typical realtor maybe doesn't have any clue, the manpower, the materials, yeah. the time, the money that it took to accomplish details that Michael and his team did like this cantilever up here, I mean, right? It's incredible. I mean, you look at that from a totally different set of eyes. Absolutely. And to me, I basically crafted a language and a business model where I can honor these homes at their best, uh, you know, with their best light. 
I basically crafted a business model where I can honor these homes and talk about the struggles and the difficulties these developers went through. Yep. At the same time, make our videos very visually appealing. Yeah. And at the same time, give value by promoting these assets. So whatever reason you're watching for, whether it's to learn construction, to see beautiful homes, or just want to kick back and relax, our videos are for everyone. And that's I've kind awesome. of the lane that I picked for myself, but videos are still long because I love talking about details and to me, Spending six years and building a home like this is such a big accomplishment. It really is. It needs to be acknowledged that way. For sure. And it's congratulations on your success. Thank you. Ennis Thank and you. Michael made a video here two years ago yeah. when this was still way under construction. Go check out that video. I'll link to that. And be sure to subscribe to Ennis's channel. I mean, he's making fabulous videos on a weekly basis. He's about to travel to South Africa to go see that. You're going to Turkey. You're going yeah. to where else? Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. This is a really cool guy to go follow. And it's really so appreciate it, brother. Thank you for having me. Thanks, uh, guys. Thank you for coming. Catch you later.